Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to another episode of Rad Radio. I'm Rob Anthony Dyer, and with me tonight, I have a seasoned veteran of daytime television, Mr. Robert Kelker Kelly, known from his roles on Another World, Days of Our Lives, and General Hospital, most recently seen for the 50th anniversary as Stavros Cassidyne. And welcome, Robert. How are you? Yeah, I'm excellent. I, I love seasoned. It sounds like either I've been cooked to death <laughs> or I'm, I'm really old, but I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yes, well, you know. Uh, thank you. Um, I recently have been hooked on General Hospital, um, you know, because of the show. I do a lot of interviews with daytime stars, so I... You know, started watching GH about a year ago, and I'm, I must say I loved your portrayal of Stavros. Oh, well, thank you. I had a great time. He was, uh, he was, uh, there are so many adjectives you could use to describe him. <laughs> Luscious, uh, uh, just uh, a joy to play and, and play with, and they gave me so much material to work with. It was fun. Yes. Now, I've heard from many actors that playing evil or bad characters is the most fun. Um, well, I had the most fun on that show. I mean, it, it's funny because every, every other character, when you play a good guy, I mean, Bo and Sam and Bobby Reno and all those guys, when you break it down, uh, ultimately those guys are victims of their love for these gorgeous women who decide they need to sleep with other men. Um, <laughs> That's true. Which kind of sucks to be on the receiving end. The good thing about being the bad guy is if somebody sleeps around on you, you kill them. <laughs> or so you, it's simple. Or you hold them hostage or freeze them, right? <laughs> you know, exactly. That's the thing. You don't give them a chance to sleep with anybody else. You stick them in the deep freeze. I, you know, I, I, I much prefer being that way. That was, that was a, a kind of fun. Well, anybody who watches GH knows that Cassidyne's rare rarely ever die and if yeah, Lulu was unfrozen I mean we we could see Stavros anytime I, I have a feeling Helena cloned herself or something and is going to rise from the ocean or whatever <laughs> God, I hope so uh -huh. I hope so uh, and Laura's been in Paris an awful long time perhaps she's been k kidnapped by Stavros I have all these theories you know um, now you started acting at, at, in, um, in Wichita Kansas correct yep and uh, uh, started acting there when I was a kid and uh, continued on with it. And, uh, was really bad at, at anything else. The nice thing about acting is, you know, you could you do a play for two or three months and then you could leave the state. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the, with my personality issues the way they were and my interpersonal relationships the way they were, it was perfect for me. Um <laughs> So, <laughs> so I literally, I'd go, okay, the play's done. I got to get out of the state. They're about to arrest me. So, um, <laughs> it, it worked out. I was on the road for a long time. I did, uh, uh, the Shakespeare circuit and worked in, um, worked in Florida uh, in the 80s and, and, uh, did a show in Atlanta. I did a show in, um, uh, I'm sorry, not, not Atlanta, uh, uh, Ohio, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Minneapolis, uh, Northern uh, California. I uh, did a lot of theater. And um, when I was in Florida, I met a girl who was a Playboy Playmate. Uh, <laughs> did a movie with her and then chased her to California and then I got sucked into the business. Hmm. Well, you know, I, when I was, um, when I started watching Days of Our Lives, you were the first Bo Brady that I knew. And I, I actually, yeah. you're, you're my Ooh. favorite, personally. Um, and, uh, cause that, my grandmother watched that and I was watching it as a kid. And, um, well, I, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I had, uh, it was, it was a really good role to grab and get. It was a tough job. You were very, very well accepted. Yeah, tough to step in as a recast, but you, you were very well accepted, and and I think you did a great job. At, of course, you, like I said, you were the first one I knew, and um, so and then you taught acting in um, in Massachusetts. Yes, I still do that. You do. I, I, I taught acting in Massachusetts at a high school, and then uh, I actually taught out in California at a junior college, and uh, I still teach acting. I had a, a student this summer. Um, a friend of mine had a friend who was uh, 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 um, actually an engineering student at a college in Missouri, and uh, he's a really good actor. Um, he works in the improv group and, and wanted to continue it um, after he gets out of college. So 
he and I uh, are still in touch, and uh, uh, he's got a show coming up. Hopefully, in the next couple of months, I'm going to go see him do his work. Very cool. Now, is, um, did stage acting help prepare you for the fast pace of daytime? Absolutely not. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, well, no, because you know, uh, a stage. Okay, the shortest period I ever I ever rehearsed to do a show on uh, on the stage was ten days. Um, so you have ten days to, to learn the monologues and, and, and play with the blocking and, and feel out the character and, and uh, make your choices. And uh, uh, big time television, you're lucky if you get the script a week before you shoot. Um, and you're you're shooting, you're in constant production, so you get the, the script a week before you shoot, and hopefully you'll have a chance to read it before the night before. And one of the reasons why days was so difficult was because, um, uh, and God bless Lisa Rinna. She was a, she was a trooper. She, we did anywhere from 90 to 120 pages of dialogue a day. Wow. Yeah. I remember you guys on a lot. Definitely. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, you just get slammed by material. Um, and the speed with which things, things crop up in, um, in daytime, it's just, you know, theater didn't prepare me for that. The thing that prepared me, that the theater did prepare me for was a sense of professionalism and a sense of ethic, work ethic. Um, one of the things that I prided myself on was that I was, I was 90% of the time incredibly prepared. Um, so that was good. And there was a sense of, um, pride in the work. There were two different types of actors out in California when I was there. There were the people who had worked in theater or had come from New York, and then there were the people who had gone straight out to California. Mm -hmm. And um, different style of doing things, neither better nor worse, but just different style of doing things. Yeah, I always, I always um, was one, you know, there's people who play one role for years on a soap and really just get into the character versus somebody who plays a character for two hours in a movie and has to make the audience connect with that character in a short time. It's very different. Yeah, and, and the nice thing is, is you, uh, you work with both types of people in the soaps. I mean, you know, New York actors, you work on the New York soaps, man, you get some really amazing actors. Um, uh, uh, the California soaps, when I was there, they didn't have the same kind of, um, same kind of draw for the New York actors. Um, but occasionally, you'd get somebody who'd been working around forever, and you go, wow, um, it was just a great experience. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't really describe it. I, I, I really, uh, <laughs> having done this six months ago or three months ago, I haven't long, however many months ago it was, um, it's giving me the itch again to, to act mm -hmm. again. And, yeah. and, uh, that scares the shh <laughs> <laughs> out of me. <laughs> So it's a lot of fun, man. Well, I've heard, why are you in Florida, by the way? Let me uh, ask you that. Why it's are, it's why a long, are you in it's a long story. Um, well, just I had to have major surgery, and I wasn't able to stay in California and live by myself. And I had to, you know, stay with my family to recover. And Florida kind of sucks you in my, you know. There's some family things I'm helping with, so hopefully I'll be out of here soon. Well, I, I, I hope so too, because. Florida as a state should become part of Cuba. I agree. I think they so, should secede with Texas. <laughs> so are you going to go back to, are you going to go back to LA? Or uh, I was in San Francisco, but I want to go to LA this time. Yeah. We're in San Francisco. Were you? Uh, right downtown pretty much. Oh dude. Awesome. So, we were supposed to be in San Francisco this weekend. I was super disappointed, but now I'm in Ames, Iowa. Yes. So you, you fly now you teach flight, correct? Yep, I teach flying, and I fly, uh, uh, I'm a, a professional uh, charter pilot right now. Wow, now how did you get into that from acting? That's quite a leap. Um, my dad was a pilot. Uh, uh, growing up, uh, I, I grew up around airplanes, and uh, um, I, you know, I was desperate to find something to do. Cause by the, by the, the mid-90s, Christ, that was the last century. That's how long ago that I was. I know, it's that's crazy. Terrifying. It's crazy. It seems um, uh, Yeah, anyway, so I was I was burned out and ready to do something else because I couldn't break out of soaps. I, I just, I couldn't make that leap in doing other things. And soaps, had, had, uh, I, 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 I got tired. So, 
Um, so I, 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 I was looking around, I was doing a play, and uh, I saw an advertisement for a, a, a place that would teach you how to become an, air, a, a, an aviation mechanic. Hmm. And I always wanted to know how they worked, and, and I figured if I knew how they worked, I wouldn't feel so intimidated by the process of learning how to fly them. Hmm. Good so I chucked the uh, acting industry, and I, uh, I worked as a, a, a line guy at Van Nuys Airport and, and uh, pump gas. And I uh, went to night school and got my mechanics license and worked that for two years, around two years, a year and a half. And uh, then got the call to do the general hospital the first time. And that afforded me the, the, the money to buy a little teeny tiny airplane that I fixed up and then do the crap out of. <laughs> wow. Um, and, uh, and I got into the aviation thing. I figured, you know, yeah, I had to have a cool job, right? <laughs> exactly. I couldn't become a surgeon. I couldn't become a surgeon, so I figured I'll become a pilot instead. So, well, that um, so um, it's, it's always, kind of fun. Yeah, I've always been fascinated with that. You know, just the ability to go anywhere, anytime, really. Now, it's when you were on Another World, uh, I for, when I grew up in Boston, they didn't air that. They For some reason, the NBC affiliate just chose not to air Another World, and they put Days of Our Lives on it, too. I think something to do with it not competing against Young and the Restless, because my grandmother watched both. Um, yeah. So, but you, yeah. that, that was done in New York back then, correct? Yes, it was. New York was actually shot in Brooklyn. Wow. So uh, on Avenue M and 14th Street in Brooklyn, at the, uh, the same studio that they did the Oscar show. Oh wow! Now you played yeah. two roles, which you you had one your first role, and then um, you you left for a little while and came back with a as a race car driver. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, no, he came back as a yeah, he was a race car driver to begin with, and uh-huh. then he became. A doctor... Oh, a doctor. Was, sorry, I had it reversed. Movie. Yes, okay. <laughs> so. That's all right. I got, I got confused, too. <laughs> um, That's... Um, now, so you were in New York, then you went to um, L.A. for Days of Our Lives, and... Um, and yet... I've, you know... Well, well, actually, I was, I was in L.A. first. I was in L.A. first. Uh, didn't do any acting. Got cast on Under the World. Did Under the World. Went back to L.A. The days... Um, to, uh, back to New York for um, uh, Another World again, went back to L.A., <laughs> had a different career, went back to L.A. again to G.H., and then went back and uh, lived in the eight states since then. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, it must have been a real different experience living in Western Mass, because when even you know people from Boston, we consider that a different state, you know, <laughs> compared to... Well, it's, it's a different animal, man. It I mean, is. We're in Boston. Did you oh, know? I lived all all different parts of the city, and then with around within a twenty five mile radius around the city as well. So, yeah. So you know, you know how I mean, Massachusetts is, can be incredibly liberal. Yes. Um, I was living near Northampton, Massachusetts, oh, which yeah. is known as which is known as the lesbian mecca. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had. I, you know, I had a great time, and, and it was fun to live there. But I worked with, at the time, I was working, uh, well, part of the time, I was working as an aviation mechanic. I was sitting in the, in the break room once, and, and this guy was holding forth in the corner, uh, pitching about the State of the Union. And he was dead serious when he said, you know, this, the, the, the day this country started going to hell is the day they give women the vote. Wow, and that's rare. And I looked at it, and he was dead serious, man. This is a dude who lives in Massachusetts. I wanted to say, I'm sorry, they're going to revoke your green card, pal. Oh, my God, I'm surprised you he know? didn't get lynched by all the lesbians. It's- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you brought it up. You, you opened that can of worms. No, cause, yeah. Absolutely. They should have. I actually thought, I, I actually thought about it because it was just offensive, man. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, but, but there's, yeah, Massachusetts is a wild state. There are people up in the hill country that are just, you got to wonder. Yeah, there are um, definitely some of those there. But I, when I moved to Florida, because all I'd ever known was the Boston area and San Francisco, it was quite culture shock, you know, with the... Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Especially Central Florida. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. The people have more tattoos than yeah. teeth. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you hear that. You hear that question. If I divorce my wife, will she still be my sister? <laughs> you know, it's it's <laughs> it's not good. Oh man, I'm totally pissing off Middle America. No, that's okay. Like Florida and Massachusetts. That's okay. Why yeah. not? I it's a it joke. I'll... Okay, it's a joke. If anybody can't take a joke, go on the blogs. Please tweet about it yep. and have fun. Yes, people. Um, I don't take it seriously, so you guys shouldn't be there. So anyway, exactly. Now, um... what's the next opportunity for, to, for me to put my foot in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I like to set people. No. <laughs> if you didn't say it, I probably exactly. would have. I, you know, so yeah, absolutely. So uh, set yourself up. I mean, that's the thing. Kimmy's really good at that. Set the actor up for looking like a schmuck. <laughs> she's she, she's listening, and the worst thing about it is she can't say anything right now because she's she's getting her teeth going. Ooh, I'm going to get that guy. No, oh, I think people are going to love it. <laughs> I think people I'm are kidding. Love I'm <laughs> kidding. Dad. I'm totally kidding. Anyway, so shall we continue oh, sir, yes. with this very this interview. <laughs> Absolutely. What now, other questions can you ask me about I, my career? Well, uh, I was wondering, you know, the, the pace of daytime, has it got, I've heard it's gotten a lot faster now because of the budget cuts and everything, you know, there's only four soaps left on. So when you returned to GH for the 50th, was it even faster pace than when you had been on there in the yeah. past? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, uh, by the time I got out of, you have to understand, days of our lives, at the height of days of our lives, when I was there, um, it was truly the height of daytime. The biggest numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest share, uh, big budgets, the whole nine yards. And while I was at Days of Our Lives, O.J. Simpson screwed everything up. Oh, yeah. That's right. Preempted everything. Simpson, yeah, I mean, that was the beginning of the decline of daytime. There are a number of factors in that, and we could go through the economic and you know, technological factors. Basically, that was the beginning of it. So by the time I was on Another World in the late 90s, in the late 90s, the budgets were starting to be slashed. Um, and they were starting to realize that, you know, we've got to move faster, we've got to throw in more material, we need dark weeks to make up budget. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff. So you'd shoot, instead of five shows in a week, they started to shoot six shows in a week, then they started to shoot nine shows in a week, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, uh, an already 12 to 14 hour day became an 18 to 19 hour day. Wow. So the workload was pretty intense and, you know, actors are pretty loopy anyway. <laughs> um, they take away sleep and they even get loopier. Um, so this, this last 50th, uh, um, you know, during the 50th anniversary, I mean, they've gotten, the, the, the restrictions have even gotten more intense. Um, now, granted, I wasn't there for very long. I think I shot six shows. and uh, uh, But the six shows, they were done in one day. Wow. And, um, you know, it was, it was intense. And I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for it. Uh, um, not, not that I wasn't, I, I didn't have the lines memorized or I wasn't emotionally available for it, but I'm just out of practice, right? I couldn't tell. I thought you were, you were amazing. I mean, I just, what, the difference between Bo Brady and Stavros, I was like, wow, this guy's a great actor. Well, thank you. That's very kind. I mean, it's, it has a lot to do with the material and the direction. And the people I'm working with, I got to tell you, working with Jeannie Francis and Tony Geary is such a pleasure. Um, they are pros. So my first day, I'm back, and we're doing the big scene at the table, and there's a lot of dialogue. And uh, uh, I said to Tony and Jeannie, I said, look, I, I haven't done this for 11 years. You're going to have to be patient with me. There's going to be a couple of moments where I'm, I'm sure I'm going to go up. And the director heard me, and he goes, okay, I know how to compensate for that. So, you know, there's that sense of everybody's pulling for the finished product, which was the great thing about General Hospital to begin with. Uh, but because of the, the budgetary constraints, everybody is not only aware of pulling for the show entirely, but also pulling for the show, giving the best performance, but also the shortest period of time. Um, so rehearsal is there basically is none. You get your block and you do your emotional rehearsal at the same time, and then you shoot it. If yeah. you're lucky... You get a second take. Yes, that's uh, recently uh, when Emma Sam's just returned for you know I think she did maybe seven episodes or something. She said that um, yeah. because they worked around her schedule, like because she shot she was basically her and Tony Geary and um, Kathleen Gaddy for the most part separate from everyone else. And she's she said like they shot only two or three weeks in advance. 
Yeah. That's Days of Our Lives, I think, is four or five now, and they, they have the most rigorous schedule. Um, yeah, and the, and the reason being is because they shoot, they don't shoot show to show anymore. They shoot, they shoot blocks of scenes mm-hmm. for a bunch of different shows all at once so they can pair them, so they can lead that setup. So the setup time is less. Um, I mean, it's just, it's intense, man. Uh, and so I, I don't know how they do it and how they sustain the energy to keep it doing. But I got to tell you, man, the, the folks at GH were incredibly professional and everybody was pulling for you and they did the best they could to get the best product, finished product out of the constraints that they work under. I, yes, I agree. I mean, they, they built a new set for Stavros's laboratory. That was very cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I love that. And, then, and then, and then the kid who plays, um, uh, oh, M. Ryland. Oh, you mean, uh, Nicholas? Uh, yeah, Nicholas. No, not Nicholas. Uh, um, uh, oh, the, the younger who I froze, uh, her husband. Um, oh, oh, Dante. Yeah, then, Dante. Dante, Dante actually broke it. <laughs> he, he, he was, he was so into doing the scene that, you know, they had him pounding on something with a, with a, with a fire extinguisher and he broke it. And I think I heard it. I might be wrong, but I think I heard somebody say, didn't we rent that? <laughs> yeah, it looks very real. <laughs> <That's>, Oops. <laughs> I think my, one of my favorite scenes was the dinner. That yet uh, with Stavros and Luke and Laura. Yeah, Jeannie was great. I said to Jeannie, we were we were getting ready to shoot it, and uh, I wanted to because the dialogue was so written so specifically. I said, Jeannie, I said I might go a little crazy. <laughs> I said I don't want to scare you, nor do I want to offend you. I said, do you mind if I get a little extreme during this scene? She goes, she looks at me. She puts her hand on my arm. She goes, oh, please go for it. <laughs> she goes, please go for it. And then when we were doing that, I uh, uh, I slapped my hand on the table and I screamed at her. I can't remember what the dialogue was. And she totally was in the moment that freaked her out. Yes. That's... And uh, <laughs> they said, cut. And I said, gee, I'm sorry. That and she goes, oh, no, I love that. That was fabulous. <laughs> it was so... I was so grateful to be working with Jeannie. She's such a great lady. Yeah, I love her in the role of Laura. When she was on The Young and the Restless, it just it didn't. They didn't seem to write for her as well. I think, but um, I love the close-ups they did with like your maniacal look in your eyes when in that scene, in the dinner, the dinner scene. Well, that's not mon- that's not maniacal. That's just me. You can see me on a Tuesday night. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, then yeah, that- take me to take me. Take me to a club. We'll have some fun. You know, I just scare the <laughs> shit out of people. It's great. You know, I, I occasionally, I, I'll, I'll, depending on who I'm flying with, and not this job because you got to be professional. But a couple of the previous jobs, you know, you're talking on the air, the air traffic control, and you know, I, I have a very expressive voice, and I can get kind of crazy at times. And uh, uh, Stavros comes out. You know, depending on depending on how I, I can do it, you, you got to think that the controllers are going. Okay, is there an expert in that airplane? <laughs> what is going on up there? Yeah, that um, must. People must feel safe. I also like to. I like to. Oh, they do. They feel very safe. Please sit down. Enjoy the flight. <laughs> you might make it to the end. I, I you know, I, I, I of course would never say that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, there's anyway. not now there's not much hu- room for humor on airplanes these days, right? <laughs> no, there's really not. There's really not. You have to be like I said. This, I, I'm I'm a very professional pilot. I treat I take my job very seriously. Um, but occasionally, when you're sitting at forty two thousand feet and you've been in the air for five hours, um, you just kind of you get bored and. Uh, I will, uh, I will bring up the accents occasionally. <laughs> you know? Accents are fun, definitely. Now, uh, you, accents are fun. You said you're getting the acting bug again. So, what would your um, what kind of role would you want to play if you had your choice of anything? Okay. Stage, film, soaps again, or what? Well, I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, Stavros felt like a glow. Yeah, yeah I, I really dug playing Stavros. I would I would say yes to that in a heartbeat. 
Um, ah, well, then I sense a social uh, I, media campaign coming on. <laughs> yeah, well, I would, I would love that. But uh, uh, honestly, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's just funny because I, I, I like the idea of acting again. I just don't like the idea of living in L.A. again. Because mm. um, that's, the, I mean, that's the way you got to do it. And there are so many good actors out there, so many people who have been busting their ass. I don't want to take the jobs away from them. <laughs> and I sure, I sure don't, I sure don't want to live the job live the life of an actor anymore. Um, I have a relative amount of, of security doing what I do. Um, I live in a town that is uh, very good for kids, and uh, it's a very nice town. Um, yeah, and, you know, rent and the price of a home is not skyrocketed through the roof. Hmm. LA is just insane. I live in New York, they're insane. Yes, Boston's was pretty bad too, San Francisco as well. But, um, I've, you know, GH has done a lot with, um, they've worked with actors to, um, you know, they're not on contract, but they'll give them a good storyline for a month or two, and then they give them some time off, and they can come and go. You know, Emma Sam said she might be working something out where she can fly in and do, you know, shoot for a couple of weeks and then go back to England, you know, something like that. I would, I, you know, I, I, when I left uh, um, this last time, and uh, I told Mark Teshner, the casting director, and the executive producer, I said, you know, you let me know. I'm, I'm, I am available if you want it. So I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. I, I would love to do that as a matter of fact. Yeah, Frank and um, Frank and Ron so, do a great job with it. I think with GH. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, they're a great, they're a great group of people, and I really would like to see. The soap to survive. Oh yeah, and I think Frank is doing a really good job at that, and I think that uh, uh, Jill is doing everything she can over at the rest of And uh, I would really like to see soaps uh, survive for another 20, 30, 40 years. Absolutely. And that's part of why I yeah. do the show because you know I grew up watching them. My Italian grandmother would babysit me and she'd like no talk during my stories you know and and she'd swear at the television in Italian and <laughs> oh god I bet that was brilliant now do you speak Italian no not really I, you know she spoke a really um, really kind of um, rural dialect so yeah. um, I can understand some of it and you know but not the way she, the Italian she spoke was if you talked to someone in Rome they'd look at you like you had four heads <laughs> <laughs> but she's, now, I know the swears. Speak, I can swear in Italian very well. <laughs> Is that ab- ab- absolutely. I actually uh, uh, pulled that out, and you probably wouldn't want to hear this, but Vafangu, huh? Oh, yes. That was one Remember? of my favorites. She, yes. Oh, she used to say that. Yep. And um, Bhutan, as she called the women on the soap operas if they're sleeping around, you know. And <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Or anytime, I would love to have met that. Anytime she saw Cher. get into this? <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> no, wait. How did you? How did you? Are you an actor? Were you an actor? Um, what did you used to do? I am a musician, a singer, songwriter, producer, and um, I, I've always had a bit of the acting bug. And this sort of happened just completely. I fell into it by accident. I uh, a year ago, I joined Twitter. I, I was I resisted forever, but I released a solo album. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not touring. I have no band. I got to promote it somehow. And that's why I went on Twitter and. One of the first people who f- I was my Twitter friends was a former soap actress, and we just hit it off. And then I ended up so one of the people who did one of these types of shows had a thing where if you can book a guest, you can co-host. So I did, and and uh, we had all three Ashley Abbott actresses on, and um, then I just stayed on as a co-host, and then decided to do my own show. Uh, all right, so now uh, I'm going to ask, what's your last name so I can look up your music? Oh, it's Rob Anthony Dyer, D-I-R-E. You can find it on iTunes and Amazon and anywhere, pretty much online. Rob Anthony Dyer. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to download some of your music, dude. Well, that's really cool. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I love that. Oh, dude, I, I love this stuff. You know, the great thing about I, I have to say that I love technology now. Yes. Because the fact of the matter is, is you know, I can t- be talking to you and, 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 and learn something new and pop up and get exposed to some new music. Or I can talk to somebody else and get exposed to some, some uh, a new writer and just look it up immediately and start absorbing the information. I think this is cool. And that's so awesome. Yeah. All right, wait. Uh, I, I see YouTube. Twitter, 
Just get the, I gotta go to I gotta go to iTunes. Yeah, get that up on iTunes. iTunes is the best place, or Amazon. And um, well, you know that's it's tough being a independent artist and. <laughs> And uh, yeah. uh, being an actor is one, it's one of the toughest things. And when you have the bug for the entertainment business, it's uh, it's kind of you know a lot of times people don't have the guts to go for it. And uh, but you did. Yep. Well, it's it's one of those things that I mean I'm hoping to instill that in my daughter. It's carpe diem, seize the day, because you know the fact of the matter is, is we don't. There's no guarantees that we have tomorrow. Um, and we might as well just say what the fuck <laughs> and, and, and go for it. Uh, otherwise, ooh, wow, blonde. Oh, not anymore. That I changed it last week, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like to morph. Yes, now I have short black hair. But um. <laughs> oh, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to listen to this stuff. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. And you know, I'm I'm going to start tweeting uh, Frank and Ron and and say bring Stavros back. Well, Scott, please do. I would love to do that. I, you know, yeah, that. I, I, and I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a lot of other people who agree because uh, that's just you know they need some Cassidines back, and you were amazing at the, in the role. Well, thank you. That's very kind. I appreciate that. I had a great time. Not a great time. Well, you know, it's been an um, absolute pleasure talking with you. You're you're very funny and smart, and and I appreciate you spending the time. Well, thank you, man, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in whatever, uh, wherever you end up. And I'm going to listen to your music. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. And um, no worries. <laughs> you have a great night. You too, man. I'll talk to you soon. This is Rad Radio.